everyone, it's Yura and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm just gonna jump in and tell you guys that I had to close up one of my online shops and I'm deciding to move to just focusing on one store. Since I closed this other store, I now have all of these clothes. But all of these clothes are very outdated. They're kind of tacky now since they just kind of been sitting for a couple years. And this is mainly because the way I was running it was not the best way to run it. So I'm going to try and reform these and upcycle them so they could be easily added into anyone's closet in today's 2021 style. A quick message from a sewing newbie. Welcome to my sewing station. I'm just here to pop in and give a little PSA to read your sewing machine manual. I sewn on this machine for 10 years and that 10 years was gruesome, just bloody mess. There was a lot of tears involved, a lot of sweating, a lot of needle breaking. And this is because I never had the manual. This is a 20 plus year old machine um, that was my mom's and she lost the manual somewhere along the way. So it wasn't until fairly recently that I found the manual for this sewing machine online. Mind you, 10 years ago, the internet was not what it was today. Dinosaur times, the manual like this was just not available. Now it is, so PSA, read your manuals. I learned properly how to use the machine. For example, one of the things I learned was this thread holder right here goes down and up. This whole time I've been sewing it with it down so sometimes if the, the thread is unraveling too fast, it would just knock over like that. But if you have it in the upright position like this, you could slap it around like a raggedy doll and nothing will happen to it. It will still stay there. Let's try that again without it being up. Now another thing I learned was how to properly wind a bobbin. So before last week, I would hand roll all of my bobbins. And as you could imagine, it's very frustrating, very time consuming. Also the tension isn't right uh, when you do that. So a lot of the times my thread would get stuck and I didn't realize that was the reason why I was having so much issue. And it wasn't until about a week ago that I learned the machine could do it for you. And all you have to do is make sure it's in the right position and then just press the pedal and it'll wind it up for you. It blew my mind that you could do this. Cause you have to understand that for 10 years, I was hand winding my own bobbins. And that's because I didn't realize that was a capability that this sewing machine even had. Now there's a bunch of other things that I learned about this machine, but I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. Just as a quick PSA to go and read your manual if you are having a very hard time <laughs> figuring out your sewing machine. Now back to your regular scheduled programming. For this drift flip, I have this cotton button down in this gorgeous hue of pink that reminds me of strawberry milk, but this is so boring. <laughs> this shirt is so boring. It's like what I will wear to the office. It's so boring. I'm so over it. I like office wear. I know. No more office wears for me, please. So I just want to add a little bit of spice to it. I knew I had wanted to make this into a milkmaid crop top with puff sleeves. However, I've never sewn this much, let alone made a sleeve. So it's an extreme understatement to say that I was very intimidated by this project. <gasps> okay, I got it. I got it. After spending hours trying to figure out how to tackle this top, it wasn't until I was burning the midnight oil that I actually started marking the top with reference points on areas that I wanted to cut. For the next morning, I was feeling refreshed and confident and I went and added some new markings on the shirt and finally decided to cut this baby up. The confidence was great until... I've done fucked up. So I actually made the mistake of starting the cutting process before my brain was fully awake and functioning, which led me to not cutting with seam allowance in mind. And I also cut straight across where the shoulder straps were meant to be. And my thought process was if I had kept the original armhole shape, then I could just add a gathered puff sleeve to it without creating a new armhole curve for the sleeve since I had 
no idea how to draft an armhole curve. This was fixable so far, I just needed to change the plan a little bit. That is until... I made another error and cut without the thought of giving myself seam allowance again. So I decided to ditch the thought of having a shoulder strap at all and an armhole to go with it, but it left me with this major dilemma of how to make the puff sleeve without an armhole guiding it. Did I overthink it? Why yes I did, because I have absolutely no experience behind pattern making and fabric manipulation, so this was way over my head. At this point, I was trying not to freak out and do what I can do for now, which is to cut the rest of the shirt and see what I'll be working with. So I went and cut off the cuffs and the seams off of the sleeves. Then cut the sleeve length so that I could use the fabric from the lower half of the arm as an extra fabric to make the sleeve circumference even wider. This will help when it comes to creating that puff effect in the sleeves once it's all gathered up. These are the pieces I ended up with after widening the sleeve circumference even wider by hemming the, the pieces that I cut out earlier together and I also went and hemmed the top of the bodice piece. Now, I really had to face how to deal with the next step for this puff sleeves and then I proceeded to overthink the whole process and after long deliberation with my inner self and a whole confidence monologue later, I decided to take it to the sewing machine. I'm gonna run a basting stitch all around to see if I could gather this, this up and maybe that will give me an idea. I have no idea how to do arm normals. I did this by sewing on two basting stitches around the armhole, then pulled on the top two threads to gather the fabric up, making sure not to pop the threads along the way because if that had happened, then I would need to start this whole process over again. And much to my surprise, this worked way better than I would have ever imagined. Nice! It gave me the puff sleeve that I was looking for and this process really helped me decide to go with an elastic around the shoulder to hold up the sleeve. God, it turned out better than I expected. It's a functioning sleeve. <laughs> Since I didn't want to just sew on the elastic to the top, I decided to create a casing for it to go into. Here, I'm just using the extra fabric I just cut from the scrap pieces from the shirt to create the casing. Oh, so satisfying. I sewed on the casing like one would do with a bias tape, but I have no idea if this is the right technique to use. Then I tried to pull the elastic through the casing using a bobkin, only to find out that the bobkin that I was using is way too large it doesn't fit and decided to go with the old and trusted safety pin method then stitched everything down I also hemmed the bottom sleeve using the double roll method and found out that this could function also as a casing for another elastic again not sure if this is the right technique but it does seem to work I used the same technique from the sleeve to add elastic to the front and the back neckline of the bodice. For the back, I previously hemmed it with a double stitch, which was a mistake. So I'm taking the time to seam rip this out so I can add an elastic in. So it's like midnight again. So this is what I have so far. It's really cute. Um, I'm thinking of adding drawstrings here, so I'll kind of do like this cinching. 
And then I want to do some shirring, ruching in the back. And this is going to be hemmed in to be around like this. It's so cute. I can't believe I made this. As I was um, looking at this, I decided to add in a couple of pleats to cinch in the waist a little bit. Um, and that's going to allow me on this piece to put little darts on the edge over here so that it'll create a little bit of a flounce like a little flare when it gets attached to here because if I just put it in it's going to do like this like gathering and kind of like little this <laughs> so instead of that I'm gonna do a little bit of this by cinching it in and creating a like little like a triangle this way if that makes sense and then it'll create a flare once it's all gathered up and bunched up. After sewing down the darts on the peplum and pinning it back to the body of the top, I went back to the cutting mat to make the drawstrings. After hours of debating with myself, I decided to toss out the idea of adding the drawstrings and instead I went with sewing the elastic directly onto the waistline. Decided how I'm gonna hem the waist area or like connect everything together, so I'm finally going to just sew it. This is now day three of making this top and we're so close to the finish line. I just need to add the hem at the very bottom of the top and ruching to the back side for a better fit. I just got the hemline done. This is what it looks like in daylight. It's coming along. It's actually wearable now-ish. Um, I'm deciding to do ruching and shirring in the back. I'm gonna go ahead and create those markings right now. So when I'm running it through the machine, I'll be sewing in a straight line. Looking back on this, I definitely would have made the shirring guidelines before adding the elastics to the neckline. That would have made this process a whole lot easier to deal with and I wouldn't have to struggle bus to keep the fabric as flat as possible while trying to draw on the guidelines. I tried various things to try and keep the fabric as flat as possible such as trying to weigh it down with my fabric scissors and stretching things out with my legs which seemed to work for the time. So the backside looks crazy right now with all these dots and there, I marked areas where I'm going to be doing a panel of the shearing, so I won't, it won't be the whole back side. It looks crazy, but I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm gonna take these to the sewing machine now and search. No, not sure. Just shear away now. Now, for shearing, it's really important to hand wind the bobbin with the shearing elastic so the tension would be just right. The rest of the setup is just like how it goes with a regular thread, except you can't backstitch when sewing. I made sure to do a test run with a scrap piece of fabric to make sure I have the tension just right. I ended up bumping up the tension one level up um, from what I had it already at. Once I was done with shearing down the guidelines, I ended up with a pretty good result that I was quite proud of myself because this is like my first time attempting this. 
I also noticed that the stitches were prone to slipping out since you can't backstitch to a shirring. So I went onto the wrong side of the back panel and tied down the threads to the elastics. This seemed to really secure the stitches that was just created. Now with one last look of this unfinished top, all that was left to do was to attach the bodice to the peplum piece and add an elastic to the waistband. And after all that is done, here is the final look. For the first flip, we have this sleeveless top with a long strap of ribbon for the pussy bow. Now, the print on this fabric is just this beautiful shade of emerald green, and the print design is just chef's kisses. The main issue with this top is that the fit around the bust area is not right, and it's causing it to have this puckering in the decolletage area. So, while I had this top for almost half a decade, I had never actually worn this out due to the fit issue. Slippers are great because you can just put them on and they're gonna be like your little, your little seat right here. And it'll provide all the cushions. One of the other issues I had to tackle for this flip is that the top is already pretty small and there's not much fabric to work with. So here I'm just trying to figure out which style to turn this into that would best suit the print with the given amount of fabric I had. I knew I didn't want to touch the bottom part of the top so I can keep as much of the print alive as possible. I decided to flip this into a tank top so I cut anything above the armpit off. One of the things I underestimated was how difficult it was actually to work with this fabric because it is so slippery and I didn't have too much room for error. After cutting the fabric, I took it to the sewing machine and hemmed the raw edges. I did this by folding the raw edges twice over itself, then sewing it down. Now, I was trying it on and noticed that uh, there was something just a little off about the way the fabric was draping. It had this tendency to lean towards the right instead of falling straight down. As I was playing around with this, once I turned the fabric where the seam line was right down the middle, then it started to work with me instead of fighting against me. And I already think it looks so much better already. I started playing around with the extra fabric that was originally part of that pussy bow, and yes, that's what these are formally called, basically to see what kind of strap I had wanted and to see even if I had wanted to use this as part of the strap. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these into little strips and then turn them into like spaghetti straps here. And then this will just be like a little matching hair accessory. I went and made the strap by sewing all the small strips I had cut earlier together, then folded it in half and hemmed the raw edges the long way. Once that was done, it was time to flip it inside out. And this was the hardest part since the inside of the strap was such a small area for the fabric to move. Originally, I was going to have spaghetti straps, but I decided to go with a halter strap instead. I kind of want to add a zipper to the back here, but I'm not 100% sure if I want to go through with that. Also, it seems like I would have to buy a new zipper if I do that, and that's not going to come in time. But if I do, I'll just have to use like one of these zippers that's lying around. So far, so good. Since my machine sewing skill isn't up to the level to sew over this thick fabric, as you can see by this wad of thread that has bunched up at the bottom side, I ended up hand stitching the straps onto the top instead. And 
here is the final look. For the next upcycling, I'm going to combine this lightweight and flowy tank top with this two top dress and turn it into a beautiful version of a Frankenstein's monster. This dress has all of the embroidery and ruching details that is perfect for romping in the meadows, but could use some revamping at the shoulders for that extra cottagey spirit. I cut the tank top down the middle seam line in preparation for the surgery. Then I noticed that it's extremely wrinkly for cutting, then took it to the steamer. One of the tips I learned off of TikTok was that you have an old sock here, making sure it's clean, and it's just going to catch all the excess water that steamers usually give out, especially in the beginning. So this is a really good tip because I've been using it every day since then. After all the steaming, I did some math to make sure I'm making the right decision. And then I realized that I should have probably done this before cutting the top right down the middle. Then I marked every 2.5 inches with a tailor's chalk four times. It was then I noticed that I needed a bigger cutting mat and proceeded to insert an empty tofu box from Costco in attempt to use it as an extension. Let me just tell you, it did not work. Instead, I used a scissor on the areas that I couldn't cut with the rotary cutter. Guys, if you have never used a rotary cutter, you're missing out. It is one of the most satisfying experience in the world. I then took the strips to the sewing station, folded in half, and stitched the edges together on the long side to create these inside-out ribbons and repeated the process four times. I then used a bobkin to turn the inside-out ribbons right-side out. So beautiful! And took them to the seamer so they could be pressed flat and beautiful. Now I took the fettuccines that I had just steamed and pressed and cleaned the pointy edge up by stuffing them inwards and sewing one of the edges shut for each ribbon pieces. Then I took the other side of the ribbon that's not sewn and pinned them to the dress in the approximate position where I wanted the ribbon straps to go. Once I was delighted with the placement, I sewed the straps in and here is the final look. Alright, so thank you guys so much for watching and hope you guys enjoyed this as well as gotten ideas for thrift flips. If you guys have any, let, um, just tag me on Instagram. You could also check out my shop as well where I sell vintage and upcycle clothing. So guys, as usual, much love, peace, bye!